Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Devin Adams. I am a Fortinet certified trainer here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide, and I'm making a series of videos just to uh, help me study for the NSC4. Um, I had to renew my my uh, my certification after so many so many years, and uh, believe it or not, I actually took it. I passed. Yay. So anyways, I wasn't too, too worried. Quack. Anyways, uh, but you know what? I was having fun with this, and I'm just going to see how how much I can throw at this lab until it breaks. I mean, I only have so much resources on my laptop, and I said, you know what? I'll just I'll just keep on rolling with it, So because I know there's still a few things I really want to try out. Like, I want to play more around with the SD-WAN features and, uh, yeah, stuff like that. But in the last video, Mr. Duck was making was making changes to the system and I did not like that so we did logging and then I realized you know what it'd be really nice to have email alerts set up you know so if something happens in our system we don't have to sit there and stare at log files right a lot of us don't have time to do that so uh, in this video I'm just going to make a real quick uh, email server to use in GNS3 in our test lab so and you can use this in any kind of testing environment if you want to test your your log file notifications so um, I'll try to keep this one as short as possible, but in other videos, if you go to my playlist, I believe I do have videos on setting it up uh, using Linux, and I thought for fun I would just keep it in a Windows environment, so uh, I went ahead and, uh, oh, excuse me guys, I went ahead and I um, uh, did a little poking around there and I found a pretty low level email server that's that's just perfect perfect for a lab environment and it's called hmail server it looks like it's open source it runs on windows it looks pretty uh, pretty simple so um, to download this we just go to hmailserver.com there it is all right and uh, you can read up about it there's also documentation here it is free and open source all right and then if we hit the hamburger menu here and go to download we should be able to see the download file itself and I was so shocked that it was yeah like under four megabytes anyways there it is and while I'm on the interwebs here I'm just gonna go to night night while I'm at it and I'm gonna download myself a mail client so um, I'll just use one like Thunderbird or something like that it's one of my favorite sites to go to you probably seen in my other videos but it's just pretty much a plethora of, of um, different softwares that you can download so without having to click the next button and yeah that's pretty good been using it for years so there we go Thunderbird and we'll go ahead and get my night night all right there we go so all right so that should be downloading and that one's actually just something we can have running in the background and that's probably my favorite part about night night too it's just you just let it go and uh, when this thing gets done we should have us some Thunderbird so um, let's go ahead and minimize that and we can close out of this web browser now. Now, uh, I tried this out a couple of times because, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> not going to record just me blindly doing it. Um, well, most of the time I do. As a word of warning, I ran into my biggest wall um, trying to install this when I didn't have um, .NET 3.5 installed beforehand. So, um, just take my word on it guys if you're using this in your lab environment you're using it on a Windows Server machine alright now this is not the same thing as if you are using it um, in like a normal Windows machine because it prompted you to download dot, dot net you just can't do that on a, on a server machine so you have to come over here to um, manage roles alright my whole lab environment is so slow. Here we go. <laughs> is it because Thunderbird's going in the background? All right, here we go. Add roles and features. That'd be great if I just talked really slow. Okay, come on, dude. Anyways, you're just going to want to verify that you have the .NET installed beforehand because I believe when you install Windows Server, it has the newer flavor of it. It doesn't have the older one. So just keep hitting next here. And man, that is really, really taking a toll on my virtual machine, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, come on, you can do it. And I know if I like, yeah, see, if I was tempted to hit like pause on the video so it could just sit there, of course I would get a, 
I would get a it's working now. So, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. Once this stops, by the way, it should be a little bit more snappier. Hit next. And once again, just make sure this is check marked. Okay, guys? All right. So go ahead and, and just verify it because it needs the older framework. Okay. And uh, that was the really big one that I, what I ran into. All right. So, but if that's verified, then you come here to your downloads folder. You can see the H mail server itself. So we'll go ahead and run it. All right. We'll go next. We'll say I accept. We'll hit next. We'll hit next. Server and tools. Yep. Cool. Good times. Yep. Awesomeness. Okay. And actually installs a little compact SQL server for you and everything. And I'm not going to do integration with AD or anything like this. I just want a couple of email accounts to, to play around with. Um, so while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And also it's recommended, and I'll make sure to put the guide that I found on the, um, on the uh, description here. It's kind of an older guide, but it still works. But they recommend that you do an MX record just to be safe. And you know what? I thought that was a good idea. So let's go ahead and go to our DNS manager. And let's go to IT Ninja Lab. All right. And let's make a new mail record. All right. They're going to say, what's the mail record? We're going to say it's the domain controller. Yep, keep on going, buddy. You can do it. And because we're installing it on the server, there it is. All right, just like that. Looks pretty good. We'll hit OK. And now there's at least a mail record here that, that can report if anyone asks for it via DNS. So, all right. All right, here we go. So please enter the password. So we'll go ahead and type in password. All right. And our domains here. Now, I was testing this beforehand. That's why you're seeing a whole bunch of stuff here. All right. But I am going to go ahead and, uh, wow, I didn't think it was actually <laughs> still there. Let's go ahead and remove it. All right. There we go. So uh, when you get to domains, it should say new domain. So you hit new domain. And here you're going to put in just the domain of your DC. Oops. Lab. There we are. We'll hit save. All right. And then after that, we are going to go down to uh, settings and protocols, SMTP. All right. Delivery of mail. Just kind of make sure everything here looks okay. DC1 looks good. Port 25 looks good. Also, though, if you want to, and I found this out from another one. Uh, if you are just using this in a lab environment, they suggest that you take off authentication for SMTP. That way you won't be prompted for credentials as you're playing around with it in your lab environment. So just something to, to think about. All right. So uh, once that's set there, um, so once again, we're just going to go to SMTP. And make sure that the delivery email has the local host name here. And that's all we should have to really do. Okay. And then if you want to, you can set the backup directory. So uh, we'll go down to utilities. And this way it backs up our, our business here. Here we go. I'm going to hit backup. All right. Wow, my fans are spinning. It is doing something in the background it does not like. I created a folder called Backup. And we shouldn't get any weird errors there when we hit Start. All right, cool. So, And then if we go to our, our diagnostics, we can take our domain, run it against DC1. dc1.itninja.lab, all right, and hit start, and we should get some green, some green uh, dots here. All right, there we go. If everything looks green, it looks like everything is working. Okay, not too bad itself. All right. So, very last thing we need to do is make some accounts. All right. So we'll make one for the Fortigate. So here we go, Fortigate. All right, we'll put a super secret password. We'll hit save. Yes, I know it's weak. It's a lab environment. Uh, let's go ahead and make another new one for me, Devin. 
Super secret password. We'll hit save. Is it weak? Yes, I am. All right. And then Mr. Duck. So we'll say uh, 40 Duck, right? 40 Duck. All right. Good times. Password, password. All right. Hit save. Yes, I know you're weak. We're in a lab environment. It should be okay. That should be it. And honestly, if that is it, that's a pretty slick, small little email server. So, like I said, I haven't really tried it, tried it out. Um, I just clicked around long enough to see if it worked. Uh, but let's set up uh, Mozilla. So, let's hit uh, exit here, and hopefully it's still running in the background. And last time, it actually took forever for Thunderbird to load up for the first time, like a good two minutes. I don't know if that's because like I was uh, running stuff in the background or what. So I had to pause the video there. Sorry about that. It was taking way too long to load up load up Thunderbird. So anyways, I loaded up. Whatever. Whatever. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. Are you guys ready? So we will set up an email account. What? I'll just say Devin. Devin at ITNinja.lab. Put in my super secret password there. And hopefully it detects it. Okay, so it it found it. All right, no encryption. That's right. That's fine. Now it's saying, hey, you know, you're doing this without encryption. Yeah, of course. It's it's my own environment. Okay, not too shabby. Too bad we have no one to email. <laughs> right. So let's hop over to our local PC here. And uh, unfortunately, this one is already started. Here we go. But this one will be 40 doc. Why not? Uh, 40 duck at itninja.lab put in our super secret password let's hit continue alright and hopefully it will be able to talk now if it fails here alright um, we'll know for a fact that we're gonna have to open up some ports so that's what it comes down to um, now when I say ports I mean okay I mean ports on our uh, domain controller. So whenever you're in a lab environment and you're like, hey, you know what, I wonder if if the ports are open and everything like that, um, you can always know if it's a firewall problem, right, by just turning off your firewall real quick. And when I say firewall, I mean like your domain controller firewall. So uh, let's take a look here. And then we'll punch open the, the ports that we need to. So it did turn out to be a... Um, a firewall on the uh, DC so um, the first time I tried it it was no uh, it wasn't the right password for the 40 duck account then after that I'm like okay everything is right and then I said you know what maybe I'll try putting down the firewall one more time and that was it so I'm gonna try to put the firewall back on and let's just punch some holes in there real quick um, so how do we do that if we go to advanced settings on our firewall uh, we can create a new a new rule all right, so we can say inbound rule, okay, get a new rule, and we will do a port, bloop, hit next, and we'll say TCP, uh, 25, uh, what else does it need here? Uh, if we come down here to our ports, so advanced, keep scrolling, baby. 25, 110, 143, 587. All right, that should be good. 125, 143, 110 for a little pop three, and 587. All right, looks good to me. Better put some spaces in between there. All right, there we go. Okay, and let me just double check. Looks good. All right, and I know like there's certain directions and what have you, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, yeah, just write the inverse and I'll just say mail. What I mean is I'm going to make another rule just for outbound because you know what, at this point I've already been recording for like a half an hour, so I'm done. Uh, let's go ahead and make a new rule now for outbound. All right, we'll do ports, hit next. What kind of ports? These ports. All right, cool. Allow the connection. Yippers. All right. Mail. All right, there we go. So uh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, our firewall's on. So 
Uh, let's see if we can get mail. Like I said, the second I turned it off, the account's connected. So we say get messages. Get messages. There's the test. Yeah. So let's go ahead and write another one just to test it. Now remember, guys, this is a uh, uh, this is that PC one that's not on the domain controller. So, all right. So here we go. We're gonna write a message. Let's write it to Devin at itninja.lab. Test. Test. We'll send. And there it is. All right, guys. So there you go. It took way too long. Maybe I'll edit out some boring parts. I never do. Whatever. But that was, I thought, was going to be a quick way <laughs> to create a to create a email server in uh, GNS3. Now, honestly, though, if if I would have remembered about the host firewall, I'm pretty sure I could have cut like 10 minutes off of this video. Anyways, guys. But like I said, this is my impromptu lab. And uh, in the next set of videos, which I don't even know if I'm going to get around today, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll set up some kind of alert on the FortiGate so I know when Mr. Duck here, Forty Duck, is going to be changing something or if something critical goes down, we need to get our alerts. So um, I doubt it you found that helpful. <laughs> so, um, and uh, yeah, I'm out. Peace.